Hello everyone, Linda Israel here, and I want to thank you for being at my live premiere on July the 4th, 2022. Happy Independence Day to all my Americans. I hope that you are having a wonderful day and you're remembering the reason we celebrate this day. I've got a project here for you today that I thought you might enjoy, and hopefully you'll Come on and participate in the July challenge in the Friendly Junk Journal People Facebook group. I have been trying to figure out ways to use up scrapbook paper and other papers that I have in my stash. And so today I'm going to show you to make a little folio somewhat like this, but it's going to be embellished. We've got here a couple of printed images from the under the sea this is under the sea over here and for out to see these are digital downloads or you can get physical printed kits in my shop at lindaisrael.com check the description box below i have a book page here and what i did was it was removed from the book and had holes down one side so i trimmed it just a little bit in my case this page is approximately ten and a half inches by eight and three quarter inches wide okay so i went ahead and took one of the digital images that happens to have this fish and has a water lay uh, table on the other side or water on the top and I trimmed it to be just slightly smaller so basically ten and a half no ten ten and a quarter by seven and a half now don't do it just because I did it this way I did it that way because my journal pages are generally eight and a half inches tall by five and a half inches wide so I was working with the papers I already have and trying to stay in the size that I like I went ahead and went around the edge with distress inks and what I want to do before I glue this down is I've got some distress oxide in blueprint sketch and I want to go around this edge now you could also use tattered angels glimmer mist to paint the edge you could use coffee dyed paper tea dyed paper any kind of dyed paper that you like I decided that I just wanted to use the regular book page if you're here at during the live premiere speak up in the chat and say hello to everybody that's here every monday at 3 45 p.m central standard time i go live and so i show people how to make a journal and journal projects and so you're welcome to come and hang out with this while i create live all right so now what i'm going to do is take this piece and glue it on top of the other piece making it centered i'm using a lean's tacky glue and I'm going to go all the way around this outside edge and then kind of make a zigzag in the middle. So this is a great project if you have a lot of book pages and you have scrapbook paper instead of putting the digital paper here you could use a pretty scrapbook paper. One that's probably light enough that you could write over it. I've glued those together. I'm going to flip this over. I know that I'm going to be cutting some paper here in a moment to fit on here. So what I want to do right now is come in here and just add some Distress Oxide pretty much in this corner because I am going to fold this in a tri-fold and this area will be seen just a little bit. I don't need to do a whole lot of the sides, but I am going to do across the top here. I did need to do the middle, but I do want to do this side. And then kind of come down where I think it's going to fold. I'm delaying because that paper is wet. I want to score and fold it. But if you try to do that too soon, your paper can rip or wrinkle. And you, won't, you don't want that. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm looking at this. This is my inside. So I'm going to flip it over. This is going to become the front. So I'm going to score this at three and a half inches. 
because of the size of paper that I have. Now, if you had 12 by 12 paper, you could score it at four inches or just shy of four inches. I scored that and I can see it pretty good. So I'm gonna put my cutter away, fold this over and score it. And then I'm gonna take this piece, instead of trying to measure and it never comes out right, I'm just going to kind of help it along and fold it over to where it doesn't meet all the way to the edge. It's just slightly smaller and then score that. So we got this portion. Now what I need is some pages. So here are a couple of pages that I want to make pockets out of. I'm using a copy weight paper. Sometimes it's a little flimsy. If you think you're going to be a little rough with it, you could double up the paper, but I figured this is going to be thick enough as it is, so I'm not going to double up the paper. I'm going to stack two pieces of paper together though, because I'm making two of these little doodads. And I know that I cut that at three and a half inch or scored that at three and a half inches. So I'll kind of verify. Yeah, three and a half inches. So I'm going to take this and cut through both layers, a three and a half inch by eight and a half inch. Now I'm going to rotate this around. And if I remember correctly, this should be right at seven and three quarters of an inch. So I'm just going to trim it down again and I'll have a little, little couple of small strips that we can use somewhere else, but I'm just going to stick them in my bin for now. Oh wait, I'm not done with that. All right. So now what I did was I found where the center was and just kind of made a little mark. Sometimes I'll use my distress tool. So I made a mark. I recommend that you don't use directional papers for this portion because what I'm going to do is take this mark and line it up on my cutting mat or the cutter area. So I'm lining it up with the top and lining it up here and I'm cutting it at a diagonal. And now I have four pieces that I can use and this is what I did. I separated them and I, I, I did the corner on the opposite side from the last time I did it. So this will be different. <laughs> so now I have these two pieces and I found that if I take those, I can lay them on top and that makes a natural pocket. So now what I'm going to do is go around the edges with the distress ink. I'm using Walnut Stain and the Tim Holtz Blending Tool. How is everybody? I hope you're doing well. Hope you're having an amazing day, that you had an amazing week. I will be live next Monday working on a journal using both the Out to Sea and the Under the Sea journal kits. I was requested during one of my live streams to blend the two together. So that's why I decided to go ahead and make this tutorial. By the way, this tutorial is for the challenge in the Friendly Junk Journal People, Friendly Junk Journal People Facebook group. Come hang out with us in the group. There will be an event that you can post photos of your version of this little a pocketed folio. I don't know. I think we call it a pocket folio. So definitely let us know what that's like. Uh, definitely share with us what you have created. I don't know why. Don't let us know what you like. <laughs> all right. So I've got all these pieces. So the next thing I want to do is I want to add some stitches to these. So I'm going to take these two pieces and independently stitch right down that side. So let's go over to my sewing machine. Okay. So I'm at my sewing machine. I have a electronic brother sewing machine. Use any sewing machine that you have. I do recommend that you use new thread in that it's not thread that's been around for 20 years or so because it's going to probably be brittle and break when you start sewing. I'm using a regular needle, regular thread. I have black thread in my upper and my lower. I do have it set for a zigzag stitch. There's one done. So I'm going to do one more. All right. So now what I'm going to do is basically I'm going to put this triangle on top of the other and just so happens I cut it just the right width that I didn't have to cut any of off. 
but if you have to go ahead cut it off it's okay I'm going to stitch down this side and go all the way around I'm going to repeat that on the other piece the same way and actually what I should have done was put it in this corner and I would have had to cut some off so I'm going to do that so you can see what it looks like going in both directions so this is the way I meant to put it down so that it was opposite so I'm just going to start here on the bottom all right so I went all the way around that piece let's come back over to the main desk we have folded this the way we want it and I think I want to use this one on here so I will glue this down right on the front as a pocket so I'll go down this side across the bottom and up the other side you can see the book page below then you see the printable here so now I've got this one and I'm going to put it on top of my other one that I have here so you can see the different way it looks when you angle the pockets differently so this is one of these fun things that you can go through your stash and grab some papers that kind of go together or really choose oddball papers maybe even break up some of that paper that you just haven't used because you don't really like it that much but cutting it up into smaller pieces like this you kind of change the way it looks all right so we put those two pieces on there and then I went ahead and fussy cut out an octopus so this is one of my rubber stamps it is a laser rubber stamp and it's called octopus I have a whole collection of under the sea and out to see rubber stamps that you can use and I thought it would just be really cute to just glue that down right here on the front sometimes I add cheesecloth and that kind of stuff to it or even lace but I don't want this to be super duper bulky and it's already pretty thick as it is with all the folds so I'll just glue this down kind of put my fingers where I don't want glue so keep it down here I'll put an acrylic block on it for a moment and then I'll put this one on this side so again I try to put my fingers where I'm not going to put glue I think I didn't get any on this part all right so we're letting that dry I'm going to set this aside for a moment I have an oversized postcard that I have trimmed down to fit in my little pocket so it's three inches wide and I made it seven inches tall I have a piece of fake book pay music here that I want to glue down and I am going to use Fabri-Tac because this is a slick postcard and sometimes Aline's won't stick to it I cut a strip that was one and a half inches wide by the seven inches tall whatever the size my journal pockets going to be and I'm putting it down over the mailing address for my card so you can't really see my home address anymore so I just smoothed that out and then I took one of the journal pages and I trimmed it down from top to bottom and then cut it down to be five and a half inches wide and folded over a part of it and then stitched it down and so what I'm going to do is glue this piece on this side yeah gotta make sure I got it right so I need the fabric tack glue again all right so I'm gonna line this up and then I'll smooth this out and then I'll take either my stylus or my bone folder and kind of go right down the edge here to help it fold over and then we're going to fold this over make sure it's even and then we're going to go to the sewing machine and stitch across the top and the bottom and down the side of our little journal card pocket so let's go back to the sewing machine now if you need to tack it with glue so that it's a little bit easier and it's not moving on you that's fine let the glue dry before you sew I'm going to start up here and then go around the outside edge here that's our little pocket we have a little journal card with a pocket 
I have a little sentiment that says, take me to the ocean. And I think I'll just glue it right here on the top. So that'll go right here. And then in the pocket, you can make some journal cards. You could use scrapbook paper. I just happen to have some of the elements from the Out to Sea kit printed. So I'm just going to pop those in here. And we've got this decorated. So now I want to go back to this one. And we need to decorate the inside. So I'm going to open this up. Oh, yeah, I need to decorate this piece. So let me move a few things. So I have already added the distress inks around the edge. This was a strip from when I cut down the paper for the inside. And I thought, well, want not, waste not. Might as well put it in here. We're using our junk. This would have been trash to anybody else. But to us, it's a treasure, is it not? <laughs> I didn't even have to cut it to fit because it was cut off of this piece after I made it shorter so it was perfect timing. I have some of these junior legal legal notepads. I can't even get the words out. Junior legal notepads and I just ripped it, cut slash ripped to get the size that I wanted and I think it'll be cute. I'm going to put it like this on our page here. I just went around the edge with Distress Ink Walnut Stain just a little bit. Use my foam folder again. And then I stamped and fussy cut out, you can see my fingers are all inky still, uh, the seahorse. And I watercolored it with a shade of blue and a shade of green. And then came back in with a little bit of brown to kind of give him some more texture. I'm going to put him down here, but when I'm looking at this, it looks kind of blah. So let's grab a scrap of paper here. And I've got the feathery stamp. And I've got the archival ink jet black. So I'm going to move him out of the way and then stamp that over the page. Remember when you're stamping, you want just firm, even pressure. You don't want to rock your stamp. And you need to let it set or rest on your surface, your paper especially so that it has a chance to transfer the ink from the rubber to your uh, product, your surface. All right, so I'm gonna put that right here. I like it. I'm gonna put a block on it for just a second. All right, so then I'm gonna grab the seahorse rubber stamp that is from the, I have to get the set. It is from the Mermaid Jellyfish Quartet. There's four little words. And these fit inside another little label that I offer. And a little uh, sign. This little, um, this one's got wet, but it fits inside here too. Signpost. All right, so I'm going to stamp Seahorse down here at the bottom. I like it. I don't think it needs anything else. I'm going to flip this over. So now we need to put something on the inside here. And I happen to have, what did I have? Where'd he go? There he is. I've got a little crab. Now he can be down here at the bottom. He could be up at the top. But I think I'm going to put him at the bottom. And then I also have a ship stamp. So I figured, you know, these are down below and this is the ocean above. So I'm going to take the ship and stamp it up here in this upper area. And I think this is from the ship cube. I'm not positive. And this is called water. And so it's little lines to make it look like a little wave. So I'm going to put that under the ship. So it just kind of looks like it's got a little ruffles in the water. And then we're going to put the crab over here. But I think I want the feathery behind him. So maybe like he's down at the bottom of the ocean and the fishes are flying around him or just flying swimming around him all right we'll put that right here so i'll just glue him down again this is a rubber stamp that i stamped with the archival ink on a scrap of some paper that i had and then i watercolored him with watercolor pencils and fussy cut him out and then i have the crab little set that has octopus, whale, crab, and turtle. 
So let's just put crab right here. I like it. Okay. Let's get this out of the way. And then this piece was the sea is calling and I must go. It was a scrap that was left over when I cut up the other page. But I thought it would be pretty to put across the top here. So I'm just going to fill this in with some glue. So now we've got this part. We've got this part. We've got our little card that's going to go in our pocket here. It's kind of a tight fit. And then I took another journal page and cut it up and made a uh, little card by using some handmade paper because it was copy paper. And it was really thin. So I thought, well, it'll look kind of neat if I put this handmade paper on the back of it. And then we'll put this. Oh, I just folded over the octopus's tentacle. Got to be gentle. So that can go right there. All right. Well, now I'm looking at it. I'm like, well, I want to be able to put this in my journal and it stay closed. So I've got some ribbon. So I'll get out a length of ribbon here and I will tie a bow. And then I'll use my fabric scissors and cut the ribbon. And then I'm going to grab a piece of packing tape. One moment. So I've got a little piece of packing tape and I'm going to put it over the ribbon. I made it a little too long, so I'll just cut it off. And this will allow me when I put it in the journal that I can make it a pocket or a, gel, a belly band or a band across the page so I can tuck stuff behind it or I can make a pocket behind it and it won't I uh, can't get my words out right now <laughs> it won't hang up on that ribbon so let's look at what I made and then I'll also show you some other examples that hopefully will inspire you when uh, you're looking at your scrapbook stuff your rubber stamps your digital pinch your whatever you have around the house so here's two different ones that I made so I've already got this one untied it just has a different card than the other but you can see how the angles look there versus having them going in the same direction so you know if you do turn it over the other way it's not a mistake it was I meant to do it this way and I forgot and did it that way but I think it still looks good and of course we have a little note card here then you can flip this over you have writing space here it's the same on this one except I used a different digital print on the inside because I wanted to see what it would look like with the different patterns so same concept, just a little bit different look. And then let me show you a couple more. So hopefully you'll have those as inspiration. Now here, I just use scrapbook paper. I cut a piece to be eight inches tall, and that left me with a four inch strip across the bottom. So then I took that four inch strip and I did the same technique where I cut it at an angle with two pages stacked. And that gave me these two smaller triangles and the larger triangles. And then I just used some, I have some colored copy paper and made tall little note cards. And then I had the scrap that was left over. I made it into a smaller little card so you can kind of see the differences there and then I didn't do anything to the inside these were not decorated they were just regular just a quickie little thing and then I made these so they're a little bit more elaborate I used some scrapbook paper and this is some digital music paper from Norella and then this is my new rubber stamp that's called taped note so it looks like it has little pieces of tape in the corners and I watercolored it and just glued it directly down this was a scrap that I had left over so I folded it to make a little booklet used a music love flows quietly this is a Tim Holtz flower then on the inside I made another little pocket like I did for the C version and this time I stamped it this is a new rubber stamp that I have in my shop called flax F L A X and I watercolored it with some different pencils and put destiny is calling this was a scrap that was on my desk and made a pocket and used the notes rubber stamp at the top I used the music I think it's called sheet music but I think if you do music as a stamp and search it you'll find it and then I just kind of lightly touched it all over 
And this is the same. It's just a different color of scrapbook paper. So I used a pink scrapbook paper there. I made the same card. So you can kind of see the difference between the two. And then here's another note. I didn't put anything on the inside. I just decorated the outside. And then when you flip this over, I had these little tucks left over. And this was the scrap that was left over the scrapbook paper. So I just folded it in half. Over here, this was a scrap that was left over from one of my live streams. It just happened to be laying on my desk, little graph looking paper. But I did use the junior legal notepad over here. And I stamped them the same. I used the music notes and I used the flax stamp. And then I did the same thing on the inside. So you can kind of see the difference. Now these papers I did spray with Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist and it altered the color of them. So you can see the pink and the blue. I had this ribbon in my stash forever and ever and ever. And I just thought, well, you know, I can use up some scrapbook paper. I can also use up some ribbon in this project. Well, I hope you enjoyed seeing this project today that you're inspired to go through your stash and make one and then share your version, whatever you make it, with the Friendly Junk Journal People Facebook group. We'd love to see it. If you even make a tutorial or a craft with me, please feel free to share that as well. All right, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. Share it with your friends. Check the description box to links to the products that I shared, as well as my social media connectors. Hey, if you're going to order off of Amazon, click down on one of my links that take you to Amazon, maybe for like the scissors or the craft punch or the... Uh, what is it? The Distress Inks. And I get a little bit of a commission if you place an order. You don't have to order that product, but if you're going to order something else, I greatly appreciate it. And then, of course, check out my shop where I have all these items that I offer to you to have fun with. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Have a fabulous day. We'll see you next week. Bye, everybody.